So um, I mean, there's an architecture that um, we've been wanting to do with Tesla for a long time, uh, and we're finally we finally figured it out. Um, and I think it's it's the way that all electric cars in the future will ultimately be made. Uh, it's the right way, to, right way to do things. Um, so it's, it starts with uh, having a single piece casting, or a single piece casting for the front body and the rear body. Um, and uh, in order to do this, we uh, commissioned the, the largest casting machine that has ever been made. And it's currently working just uh, over the road at our uh, F Fremont plant. Uh, we have the, 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 it's pretty sweet. Um, ma making the uh, entire, currently making the entire uh, rear section of the car in a, as a single piece, high pressure die cast aluminum. Um, and in order to do this, we actually uh, had to develop our own alloy uh, because we wanted a high strength casting alloy that not, did not require coatings or heat treatment. Uh, this is a big deal for, for castings, especially with a, la a large casting. If you heat treat it afterwards, it, it tends to deform. It kind of like does this like potato chip thing. So it's very hard to keep a large casting uh, to have its shape. Um, so in order to achieve this, there's, there was no alloy that existed that could do this. So we developed our own alloy, a special alloy of aluminum that has high strength without heat treat and, and is very castable. Uh, so that's a you know a great achievement of our materials team. Um, in fact, in general, we've got a lot of advanced materials coming for for Tesla that new alloys and, and materials that have never existed before. So. Uh, so you're basically making this, the, the, the front and rear of the car as a single piece, um, and then that, that, that then inter the interfaces to uh, what we call the, the structural battery, where the battery for the first time will have dual use. Uh, the battery will both have the use as an energy device and as structure. This, this is absolutely the way things are done. In, in the early days of, of aircraft, they would carry the fuel tanks as cargo. So the, the fuel tanks um, actually had, were quite difficult to, to carry. They were like basically worse than cargo. You had to, had to kind of bolt them down. Um, it was very difficult. Uh, and then somebody said, hey, what if we just make the wing tanks, what, what if we just make the fuel tank in wing shape? So uh, all modern airplanes, the fuel tank, your, your wing is just a, a, a fuel tank in wing shape. This is absolutely the way to do it. Um, and then the, the, the fuel tank serves as dual structure, um, and it's, not, it's no longer cargo, it's, it's fundamental to the structure of the aircraft. This was a major breakthrough. Um, we're doing the same for cars. So, so, so this is really quite profound. Uh, the, effectively, the, the non-cell portion of the battery has negative mass. So we save so much mass in the rest of the vehicle, we save more mass in the rest of the vehicle than the non-cell portion of the battery. So it's like, well, how do you really minimize the mass of a battery? Make it negative. Make the battery non-cell portion of the battery pack negative. Um, so um, it also allows us to pack the cells more densely because we do not have uh, intermediate structure in the battery pack. So instead of having these like, uh, supports and stabilizers and stringers and structural elements in the battery, we now have a lot more space in the battery because the pack itself is structural. Um, the, and what we do is essentially, um, like what we, like we, instead of having just um, a filler that is a flame retardant, which is currently what is, is in the 3 and y battery packs, we have a filler that is a, a structural adhesive um, as well as flame retardant. So it effectively glues the cells to the top and bottom sheet. And this allows you to do shear transfer between the upper and lower sheet. Just like uh, if you have like a Formula One uh, craft or like a, a racing boat and you have uh, carbon fiber face sheets and say aluminum honeycomb between them, uh, this uh, gives you incredible stiffness. Um, and it's really the way that, that any super fast thing works is uh, you, you, you create a, um, basically a, a, a honeycomb sandwich with, with two uh, face sheets. Uh, this is actually even better than what aircraft do because aircraft do not do this. Um, they, they can't do this because fuel is liquid. So <laughs> in our case, the batteries are solid. So we can actually use the, sh the, the steel shell case of the battery to transfer uh, sh uh, shear from the upper and lower face sheet, which makes for an incredibly stiff structure, even stiffer than a regular car. Yeah. In, in fact, if this was, if, if this was an, in a, uh, in a, uh, like a, a convertible uh, that had no upper structure, it would be stiffer 
then that converter will be stiffer than a regular car. So this is it's just really to ha it's a pro really major. Um, so it improves the mass efficiency of the battery, um, and then the, those castings are also quite important because you want to transfer load into the structural battery pack uh, in a very smooth, continuous way, um, so you don't um, put uh, arbitrary point loads into the battery. Um, so you, you kind of have to, you, you want to sort of feather the load out from the front and rear uh, into the structural battery. Um, it also allows us to uh, use uh, to, to move the, the cells uh, closer to the center of the, of the car. Um, because we don't have the, 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 in the top one, we've got that sort of all the supports and stuff. So the, the volumetric efficiency of the structural pack is, is much better than a non-structural pack. And we actually bring the cells closer to the center. Um, and uh, because they're closer to the center, the, uh, it reduces the probability of, uh, of a side impact uh, potentially contacting the cells. Because they have, it has to go, in, any kind of side impact has to go further in order to reach the cells. Uh, it also proves uh, what's called the polar moment of inertia, uh, which is that you can think of like when there's a like a ice skater uh, arms out or arms in. Arms in, you rotate faster. So if you can uh, bring things closer to the center, you reduce the polar moment of inertia, and that means you can you, the car maneuvers better. It just feels better. You don't want to know why, but it just it just feels more agile. So it, it's it's really cool. This is really major. Um, like I said, so 10% mass reduction in, in the body of the car, 14% range increase, uh, 370 fewer parts. So, I mean, I, I really think that, that long term, in any cars that do not uh, take this architecture will not be competitive. And it's not just at the product level a better product, um, but in the factory, it's a massive simplification. You saw the part removal. Um, you know, it's casting machines, it's the structural battery pack. So we're looking at over 50% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour, 35% reduction in floor space, and we'll continue to improve that as we make the vehicle factory of the future. Yeah, so it's major improvements on, on all fronts from the cell all the way to the, the vehicle. Um, and in addition to the improvements we just said on enabling additional range and improving the structural performance of the vehicle, it is worth another 7% dollar per kilowatt hour reduction at the battery pack level, bringing our total reductions now to 56% dollars per kilowatt hour. Yeah.